Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro video. In this one, I'm going to talk about seven hidden features in Final Cut Pro that you should know about. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brad, and on this channel, you'll find filmmaking and photography tutorials, as well as the occasional travel vlog when Donna and I get the chance to travel. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, then please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified when we post new videos. In last week's video, 10 best free plugins for Final Cut Pro, I mentioned a giveaway to win a massive pack of more than 300 transitions, over 700 LUTs, more than 150 gigs of lens flares, dust mats, light overlays, bokeh overlays, sound effects, and so much more. If it's not yet the 8th of October 2020 at the time that you're watching this, then you could still be one of three people to win. So I'll link to that video down below and up here. Okay, let's get into the seven hidden features in Final Cut Pro. I call these features hidden because unless you know about them already, they aren't blatantly obvious or necessarily the easiest to find in the Final Cut Pro interface. Having said that, the first hidden feature in Final Cut Pro that you should know about is optical flow. Optical flow is going to help you to create super smooth slow motion footage like this. When you're slowing down footage, you're limited to how much you can slow the footage down by, by the frame rate of your footage and the frame rate of your project. Let's have a look at this example where I have 120 frames per second clip, which means I can slow it down by a maximum of 20% on my 23.976 frames per second timeline. Here's the clip played back at 20%. And this is what it looks like if I tried to slow it down by more than 20%, let's say at about 5%. See how it stutters and just looks really bad? This is where optical flow comes in. Optical flow analyzes your footage and then it generates new frames based on that analysis, allowing you to slow footage down even further than normal. Let's take that same shot at 5% speed and we'll go over to the speed icon over here, down to video quality and select optical flow. It'll take a little while to analyze the clip and when it's done, it looks like this. Much better, right? I'm planning on doing a more detailed video on how to create super slow motion in Final Cut Pro using optical flow, which if it's out by the time you're watching this video, you'll find a link down below or up top here. If it's not, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post it. The second hidden feature in Final Cut Pro is the Ken Burns effect. If you're not familiar with it, this is what it looks like. The Ken Burns effect creates a pan and zoom movement with start and end points that you can set. You can find it by clicking on this drop down menu over here and selecting crop. You can then activate the Ken Burns effect over here. You'll notice that you have a green outline labeled start and a red outline labeled end. These outlines indicate what your start and end positions will be for the movement, and you can adjust these. Let's start with the end position. I can resize it simply by dragging the corners, but if I hold down Option or Alt and drag one of the corners, I can keep the center position exactly where it is. Let's set the start position as well, maybe somewhere over here. Once you've set your start and end position, you can click on this preview button to play back what you've done. If we go back into the Ken Burns editor by selecting the clip, you can click on these two arrows up here in the corner to swap your start and end positions to reverse the movement. The third hidden feature in Final Cut Pro is the precision editor, which is not something you'll use all the time, but it's really handy to have in certain situations. To access the precision editor, double click on the cut between two clips. You'll notice an expanded view pops up. Each of these markers represents another cut in your timeline. There are a few ways to adjust the edits using the precision editor. You can grab these little markers to create a roll edit, which basically means you're shortening one clip and extending the other at the same time. You can also drag either end of the clips to create a ripple edit, which basically extends the clip and moves the other clip. So you'll see if I pull this out here, the other clip moves along and it's not affected. My favorite way of using the precision editor and what I find to be the most useful use for it is to skim over the first clip until you find the exact point you want to cut at, like right here and simply click to adjust the out point to that position. You can then do the same for the second clip, like this. And then you can move through the rest of the cuts in your timeline to precisely adjust those edits. This works well when you need to cut at an exact point in time, like in the case of these two shots. Here's Donna turning a door handle to open the door, and the next shot is on the other side of the door as the door handle opens. So let's open up the precision editor, scrub through to where her hand has pressed the door handle all the way down and the door just starts to open. I'll click there to adjust the out point of the clip to that exact frame. In the next clip, I'll scrub through all the way until the handle is down and the door is just starting to open as well, and I'll cut there. To close the precision editor, just double click on the cut marker. If you play this back, you'll have a seamless sequence that cuts in all the right places. Number four is the automatic speed feature. 
I love this feature because it saves me so much time. Essentially what it does is make sure that every frame of a clip is played back regardless of the frame rate. Now to get the most out of this feature, you'll need to know a little bit about frame rates, possibly slow motion footage, and what the automatic speed feature is actually doing to your footage. Let's assume you have a 23.976 frames per second or 24 frames per second timeline, and you put 120 frames per second, technically 119.88 frames per second clip on the timeline. When you play that back, Final Cut Pro is going to drop frames in order to make sure that one second of 120 frames per second footage is equal to one second on a 24 frames per second timeline. If you do the math and take your timeline's frame rate divided by the frame rate of the footage, you get the minimum speed that you can slow the footage down to without dropping any frames. Using the 120 frames per second example on a 24 frames per second timeline, you get 20%. When slowing that footage down on the timeline, the closest you can get with a preset speed adjustment is 25%, which is fine, but you could go slower. And to do that, you'd have to go and set a custom speed of 20%. If you're doing this for a lot of clips, it can be a really tedious process especially if you have a bunch of different frame rates on the timeline as well that would need to be set to different speeds. For example, let's say you have GoPro footage shot at 29.97 frames per second on a 23.976 frames per second timeline. That could be slowed down to 80% without dropping frames. Let's say you have a few 120 frames per second clips on the timeline and a few 29.97 frames per second GoPro clips on your timeline. You can select all of these clips, go to the Clip Retiming Options drop-down box and select Automatic Speed. The speed of all these clips will be adjusted so that every single frame plays back on your timeline. You'll see here some clips are set to 20% and some are set to 80%. Number 5 is the skimming tool in the effects window. You probably already know that you can hover your cursor over some of the different effects in the effects window to get a preview of what it'll look like before you apply the effect. But what you might not know is that you can preview the effect at different opacities before applying it to your clip. Let's have a look at the different looks effects that Final Cut Pro has built in. If you hover over these, you'll see a preview of the effect at 100% opacity. If you hold down Alt or Option and scrub over the effect, you can see what it might look like at various opacities. This is helpful when trying to find an effect that'll work for your shot, especially since most of these looks are just too much at 100% opacity, and it saves you time by not having to apply the effect, change the opacity and realize it's not working, and then delete it and look for another one. It doesn't work on every single effect, obviously, but it works on most of the stylized effects. Number six is the batch sharing feature. This is a really simple one, but super handy if you often need to export multiple edits one after the other. Before discovering this feature, I used to double click on timeline number one, hit Command D, choose the destination and export, and then double click on number two and repeat for all of the timelines I needed to export. But with batch sharing, all you need to do is select all the timelines that you want to export by shift clicking or using Command to select the individual timelines, and then you hit Command E to export them all to the same destination, one after the other. Like I said, it's a really simple one, but a huge time saver if you didn't already know about it. Number seven, and the last hidden feature in Final Cut Pro on this list, is the ability to save effects as presets. This is a super useful feature that I have recently started taking advantage of. If you have a bunch of effects or even a single effect with specific settings that you find yourself repeating over and over again in your edits, then this one is gonna save you a lot of time. Let's say you have a bunch of effects that you've added to a clip, like a LUT, maybe a Curves plugin, and a Sharpen effect. You've already selected the LUT you want to use, adjusted the exposure curve, done the necessary color adjustments, and added a slight bit of sharpening. And now you want to add that to other clips or repeat the effects. Sure, you can copy the clip using Command C and paste the attributes using Command Shift V to quickly copy the effects from one clip to another. But what if you're working on a totally different edit days apart and you know that you'll need that same group of effects? Instead of having to apply those effects again from scratch or open the other library and copy and paste the attributes, you can create a preset using the little Save Effects Preset button down here. You can choose which attributes you want to save to the preset, choose a category for it, and give it a name. The next time you want to use it, you can simply navigate to your preset in the Effects window and drag and drop it onto your clip, and all of the effects will be applied to the clip. That's it for the list of seven hidden features in Final Cut Pro, but I'd love to hear from you. Which hidden feature do you think will be the most useful to you? And are there any features that you'd like to see a more in-depth video on? Let me know down in the comments below. If you found this video interesting and you'd like to see more videos like this, then please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we post new videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.